The Iron Studios, Mandalorian, and Grogu have entered the Secret Sanctuary. Let's take a look. Welcome back to the Sanctuary, guys. If you live in North America, you're probably very familiar with the problems that collectors had ordering this piece. Originally, it appeared on several distributor websites, but was very quickly yanked from those websites unceremoniously with little, no explanation whatsoever. And we were left in the lurch. So if you're in North America and you contacted Iron Studios and said, hey, are we going to be able to get this piece? They told you Sideshow will carry it later in the year, but they wouldn't be specific about when or how big their allocation would be or anything like that. So we waited and we waited hopeful that it would appear on the Sideshow website as most Iron Studios pieces do. But it never happened. So I was biding my time, hoping it would appear. I wanted to use some Sideshow rewards when I ordered it, but finally decided as collectors were actually starting to receive them in other parts of the world that I better bite the bullet. So I ordered from a distributor in Australia. So we have a piece that was created, designed in Brazil, manufactured in China, distributed in Australia <laughs> to Southern California. But it arrived in one piece in almost perfect condition, one tiny little flaw that doesn't bother me that I'll point out to you. And I'm very happy with my purchase. Uh, only 750 of these. That is a really low edition size for such a popular character who you probably want to take a closer look at. So let's take a look. Okay, so this is only my second Star Wars piece. I have the life-size Grogu from Sideshow, and this is number two. And I just wanted to show you this full shot of him because I think he has a lot of presence in the room. It's a simple pose. He's just taking a step forward, but it does suggest motion, which is always nice in a statue. I still can't believe they only made 750 of these. Sideshow's making 10 times as many of their premium format, 7,500. We got a lot of weathering on the helmet here. So I have one defect. It's not really a big deal, but there's some paint loss there. Right here. That's it. That's the only defect I have with the whole statue. And I can't imagine there's any chance of a replacement, so I'm not gonna bother. It's not a big deal. I'll call it battle damage. We have this Navarro base with a Stormtrooper helmet that's obviously been there for a long time, <laughs> heavily weathered, signifying the, the end of the Empire. And then the pram is held up on this rock formation. From the front, yeah, it looks like it's levitating. Uh, I think that the sideshow piece might do a little better job with that. Uh, we haven't, we've only seen pictures of that one, of course. We haven't seen uh, the actual piece yet. But uh, that one attaches to the cape. The cape is swept over to one side and uh, the pram is attached to the cape. So I think that effect will be nicer. Um, but unfortunately, as has been mentioned, I think in some other videos, other reviews about this piece, this is really the wrong pram for this statue. Uh, this pram appears in the first three episodes of the show. And in the third episode, it's last seen uh, in a garbage bin just before Mando goes in to rescue Grogu. So that is the last time that we see this pram. And it isn't until the end of the season that Mando gets the Mudhorn signet. And it isn't, isn't even until later in that episode that he gets the new Beskar armor. So there is no point in the show 
where this iteration of Mando with the Beskar, with the Mudhorn Signet, appears with this version of the Pram. It never happens. And to me, that's kind of annoying. Uh, I don't know why Iron Studios would either, number one, make that mistake, or if they're aware of it, why they would make that choice. This should be the more metal, maybe even chrome looking pram uh, that we see at the end of season one uh, and that Sideshow is using as well. They, they got the pram right on their version and I like it better. Um, this, if what I've heard is correct, the bottom portion of this is polystone, but this cover part up top might be PVC. Uh, one collector reported that uh, he had barely touched the pram, removing it from the box, and the top part separated from the bottom part. Um, you can't actually see, there's a, even a difference in color. The top hood part is more yellowish than the bottom, which is more white. So anyway, um, that's one collector's uh, experience, but uh, if you're getting this piece, you might want to be careful when you remove the pram from the packaging. But I do prefer the metal pram, and I wish this piece had it. That's probably my only regret with this piece. Um, I like the base better on this one than the sideshow piece, just because it's more elaborate. The base on the sideshow piece is extremely simple. And I like the figure of Mando better here for a few reasons. Um, again, I have not seen the sideshow piece in person. I can only go by the photos on the product page, but he looks significantly slimmer than this one. Uh, I think that this piece more accurately reflects the body type of the Mandalorian as we see in the show. Uh, whereas the sideshow piece to me just looks too slim. Uh, I prefer the pose on this one. This has kind of a John Wayne marching into town to save the families from the evil land baron <laughs> pose. Uh, whereas the sideshow has that turn of the shoulder that a lot of collectors don't like. Um, it just doesn't, um, it doesn't look like the character on the show. You don't, you don't remember him ever having that kind of swagger pose on the show. Whereas this is a pose that we do see in several episodes on the show. So this just looks more like uh, what we want from a Mandalorian statue to me than the sideshow piece. But again, I'm going to keep my opinion open until I actually see the sideshow. I haven't even ruled out ordering that, that one. I'd love to do a side-by-side -side video. Here we have his blaster. Looks very screen accurate to me. Let me give you a few measurements. To the top of his head is 21 inches. To the top of the repulsor rifle, it's like 21 and three quarter inches. So if you're trying to fit him into a cabinet, that's the height that you're dealing with. The repulsor rifle is 19 and a half inches long. Now you can display him without it. It just keys in on the back of his cape. Uh, there will be a small hole there, but again, that's probably gonna be, you know, positioned against the wall. So from the front, you're not gonna see that small hole. Uh, you can display it either way. I think it looks better with it. It's more dramatic, uh, but you can absolutely display him without it if it uh, creates a display or space problem for you. Grogu looks great. Give you a good shot of him. I like his kind of forward leaning pose. He's curious. He's very much a part of the action. The blanket looks like it could be mixed media, but it's not. It's polystone. Very well done. Such a cute little guy. Let me give you a uh, 
boots to helmet shot. Now something uh, that other YouTubers have noted is that there is a difference in the Beskar between, for example, the chest plate and the helmet. The chest plate, if you look real close, you'll see there's some texturing there. The helmet does not have that. Let's look at this shoulder guard. Shoulder guard also has that same texturing as the chest plate. Now, maybe the forger had a bad day, I don't know. But that should not be that way. There shouldn't be that texturing. That doesn't bother me tremendously, but I wanted to point it out. Some people also think that this chest plate extends too far out. It should be more flush against him. Again, that doesn't bother me, but uh, I assume that's a legitimate concern for some. Give you a good shot from the back. Actually, I'll do side first. He's really striding forward. There is motion there. And from the rear. Looks really good. I'm happy with the sculpted cape. I think it looks really good. I like how it's tattered on the bottom. Give you a shot of his boots. I'm glad they included the weapons that they did. He looks great. So I have another problem as I show you. Uh, I'll give you another good look at him. Um, Ahsoka. Saito's coming out with Ahsoka Premium Format. She, unfortunately, is based on Star Wars Rebels. So I'm not sure how she's going to look with this Mandalorian, which is obviously based on the live action TV show paired with an Ahsoka based on an animated TV show. Um, I think that that Ahsoka is going to look better displayed with the Sideshow Mando. Now I know the Sideshow Mando is also based of course on the live action show, but the Sideshow Mando is sculpted by Matt Black who also did Ahsoka. So the, stylistically, they're more similar, I think, than Ahsoka would look with this piece. So I'm really torn because I like the Ahsoka piece. I'm a huge Matt Black fan. Matt, if you're watching, you're totally awesome. Um, but I don't know how she'll pair with this piece. So there's a possibility I might end up with two Mandos and, uh, and Ahsoka as well. What do you guys think? Leave me a comment about that. How do you think the Sideshow Ahsoka would pair with the Iron Studios Mando? Do you think better with the Iron Studios or better with the Sideshow Mando? So that's my review of the Iron Studios quarter scale legacy replica Mandalorian and Grogu. Uh, as far as you getting one, it could be difficult at this point. Um, I don't think any distributors are still offering it, but please check on that. I could be wrong, uh, but you might have to rely on the secondary market, whether that's eBay or some of the statue message boards. Um, but I think this piece will stand the test of time. I think when the Sideshow Mandalorian is released, it will renew interest in this piece. I think when the Sideshow Ahsoka is released, it will renew interest in this piece. Um, and unless another company comes along offering a quarter scale Mando and child, uh, I think that this piece um, has the potential to be highly collectible for many years. I think it's going to be in demand. 
it really hits all the right marks for a Mandalorian statue. It's really, it's cool. I can't put it any better way than that. It's freaking cool. Um, as far as when you'll see me next, I am waiting for one of the 15 container ships that I can see from my balcony uh, to dock in Long Beach Harbor <laughs> with my Sideshow Deadpool PF. Um, I think that piece is really flying below the radar. There's only 1,000 of the exclusive. It's a great pose on top of that Vespa, especially from the side view. It's extremely dynamic. Um, it's a nice piece. I think you should look into that. If, uh, if you're thinking about it, you might want to go for it because I think the X will sell out fairly quickly once uh, some YouTube reviews start uh, getting out there. So that's it, guys. Uh, I'll see you on Facebook. I'll see you on Rogues Gallery Live. I don't know about conventions. <laughs> we'll see about that. Um, apparently, there's, a, there's a, a San Diego convention happening at the end of November. I'm not sure if I'll get to it or not. It's happening Thanksgiving weekend, and most of the exhibitors I've spoken to have said they're not going to do it because setup day would be Thanksgiving Day. And... Uh, Dealers just don't want to do that. They want to spend that time with their families just like we do. So anyway, I'll see you on Facebook and I'll see you on the message boards. Take care, guys. Have a good night.